What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and we're here with a narrated Wi-Fi battle video. As you can see, my opponent today is Pruitt. And shoutouts to Pruitt, he's been very helpful with um providing me information about thing information about uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire without giving me design spoilers. So thank you so much, sir. Uh today's battle though is very clearly kind of a, a mixed tier match. Pruitt is running a lot of bulky things there. We see Gliscor, which has, of course, the Toxic Heal. Fortress being only weak to fire. Ludicolo can run a very annoying Rain Dish. Leech Seed set. Uh, Togekiss, of course, with the Para Flinching and the Stalling. And Reuniclus that can recover, with uh, Cloyster having very high defensive stats before it Shell Smashes to set up. Now, my side is a little bit weird just because I'm running things that I just, I really just felt like grabbing whatever I felt like in this battle. So we have a lead Gigalith, just to set up Stealth Rocks, also carry Explosion Rock Blast and Earthquake. More of an offensive Gigalith. Uh, Mega Pinsir, Zoroark, which I only bred recently because I really wanted to try out Sucker Punch on Zoroark. I never got a chance to do it in 5th gen. I just had the regular special attacking one. But what I wanted to try out, one with mixed attacks. So I have Hidden Power, Ice, U-Turn, Sucker Punch. Um, very, very versatile there with Gorgeist. And this Gorgeist is actually a small form of Gorgeist to be more speedy to get off the will o -Wisp and Leech Seed and Substitute Shenanigans. I have Hitmon, Hitmon Chan rather for the Rapid Spinning and a Choice Garf Delphox just to make sure I have a little bit of speed just in case I need it. So we're going to start off with Gigalib just because I wanted to get up the rocks. I see him lead with Gliscor and I figured he would just protect. Um, and I wasn't really afraid of Gliscor with Zoroark having Hidden Power Ice. So I just set up Stealth Rocks, but he actually does pr predict me to predict his protection. He goes for Swords Dance. Um, although Gorgeist that I use here is a small form and I have a large speed investment, I know I can take an Earthquake still pretty well, uh, especially if he's a more defensive Gliscor that induces attack with Swords Dance. So we're able to um, take that plus two Earthquake very nicely. Uh, I was trying just to, to seed him to offset his toxic healing, but he actually ends up going for U-turn and he, he gets hurt by the Rocky Helmet and gets out of there. But I am able to burn the Fortress, which is really, really nice just because Fortress doesn't have any way to recover its HP outside of leftovers, really. And if he is carrying any offensive moves, now their attack power is cut in half. So he starts setting up entry hazards with Hitmon Chan. I'm not too worried about those. I just have to make it a priority to spin those away because if I let um, a lot of my team get hit by entry hazards, uh, it could also give away when I send out Zoroark or not. So I don't really want to have those entry hazards around for more than a couple of turns if I can avoid it. But this is a good opportunity to get a lot of uh, my Gorgai's health back. I'm just gonna substitute up. We're gonna Leech Seed and he can't really do anything to me. So at this point, he's just setting up all of his entry hazards and basically sacrificing his fortress, which he may or may not have expected my Hitmonchan to have rapid spin. You don't really see that on Hitmonchan very often, but of course Hitmonchan has access to the same moves generally as Hitmon Top and Hitmon Lee, so they can all get rapid spin actually. Now we do see Reuniclus come in here. I just wanted to see what he was going to do. No point in burning him and no point in using Leech Seed, of course, because of Magic Guard. Uh, so I just wanted to do a little bit of damage with Seed Bomb there just to see what item he had or anything like that. And I don't see leftovers or anything. So we're just going to switch right into Hitmonchan, expecting him to just set up Calm Minds over and over. And I knew he would just use Psychic to take out my Hitmonchan, but this gives me a perfect opportunity to spin away the entry hazard. So Hitmonchan is very, very, very useful in that respect. That That is the most important thing it could have done. I think he had both layers of spikes, toxic spikes, and all three layers of spikes down. So that was a pretty important uh, role for Hitmonchan to play. Now that I have those entry hazards out of the way, we go back out into Zoroark actually. I actually decided to switch it out there because I figured if he wasn't paying attention to the HP, he didn't remember how much HP my Gorgeist has. So he might think that it was 
um, my regular Gorgas and not my Zoroark. And so now we're just going to U-turn away from Togekiss here, just putting a little bit more chip damage on it. I do take Life Orb Recoil, but against Togekiss, every little bit of damage really does help, if only because um, it can use Roost. And as we see here, we have to deal with some annoying pair of flint shenanigans. So I, I need all the help I can get against Togekiss. I decided to bring in Delphox for the sole reason of going for Switcheroo. If I could lock Togekiss into one move, that would make it so much more easy to deal with. And this was a really risky play because, of course, if you're being pair of flinch, you have a pretty low chance of attacking each turn. Uh, so I am able to Switcheroo and give him the Choice Scarf, which is great because I have Tarek, the, uh, the Gigalith, who can resist the air slice that he might be going for. So no sense in letting Delphox be KO there. I can save Delphox for Death Fodder later on if I need it to. And in the meantime, bring in Gigalith basically for free. Now I knew he was probably gonna switch. I was actually expecting him to switch in the Gliscor, which is why I went for Rock Blast, but that's okay. I will definitely take the four hits. I think I get four here of Rock Blast on Ludicolo. Based on how he didn't take those that well, I'm guessing that this is probably a little bit more of an offensive variant Ludicolo. I know Lud I think Pruitt has more than one Ludicolo. Uh, but Ludicolo is still dancing around just as happy there. He actually goes for Giga Drain and gets a critical hit. I was surprised that he went for Giga Drain and not the water type move. Um, there are more Pokemon on my team that are affected by water than, than grass, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, even with the critical hit on one of those Giga Drains, he's not able to finish me off and I'm able to take him out with the Flamethrower based on how much damage those um, Rock Blast did. I don't know if that critical hit mattered. I'll throw a calculation in the bottom there for a timid Delphox. But this does unfortunately give him an opportunity to go out in the Gliscor and basically get a free turn of Toxic Heal Recovery here as he finishes me with Facade, which I don't often see Facade on Gliscor. That's a pretty unique move there. But now that I know he has U-Turn, Swords Dance, Facade, and um, Earthquake, I am free to go out into Zoroark and just blast him with the Hidden Power Ice. So Zoroark has now gotten two KOs under the guise of Gorgeist with the Life Orb keeping his HP very, very close to my actual Gorgeist HP. So I'm pretty happy with that result right there. Now as he goes out into Togekiss, I figured he'd just go for a fire type move to hit um, my Gorgeist because he, he might still think that it's Gorgeist. Unfortunately, he gets the burn, only a 20% chance there. It's, of course, that's with Serene Grace, but still a very low chance for the burn, which means I'm not actually going to be able to take him out with the Rock Blast, which is pretty important because uh, he gets extra damage in on me here, and uh, I, I'm losing a lot of HP to the burn, so that kind of sucks, really, but that's okay. Another Flamethrower isn't going to do that much damage, and I'm going to be able to finish him off with the Rock Blast. Now, with this Togekiss going down, uh, that basically leaves him with only a couple Pokemon left, I believe. Uh, I know he still has Cloyster, and he still has... Um, no, I think Cloyster may be his last Pokemon, actually. And so I figured he would just KO me, so I kind of just clicked Explosion. And he actually went for Shell Smash, and I was like, oh... Am I going to get an opportunity to finish this battle with a big bang kind of attack? Well, the short answer is no. He lives with a sliver of HP, and that actually did a lot of damage for me being minus two, but that's okay, because I do have priority in the form of my Mega Pinsir. So we're just gonna go ahead and Mega Evolve, get that Aerialate boosted quick attack going, and that's going to be the end of that battle. So I hope you all enjoyed this match. I had a lot of fun using Zoroark and Gorgas together. They 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 go together like that Grease song where they sing about things going together. Very nice pairing there. But you guys have a great day, a great night, a great midday, evening, late morning, brunch, lunch, dinner, chicken and waffles. Yes. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.